Hello students, today we will discuss about the muscles of scapular region part 2. In the part 1, I told you about the deltoid muscle. Today we will see the muscles which lies deep to the deltoid. Now these muscles also known as scapulohumeral muscles because these muscles are also responsible for the movement of shoulder joint and they are connecting the scapula to the humerus. So the muscles which are responsible for the movement of humerus and they are connecting the scapula to the humerus, they all are known as scapulohumeral muscle. We have seen the deltoid. Now the muscles which are deep to the deltoid are subscapularis, supra and infraspinatus, teres minor and major. And when you will see the dissection, now this is what you can see here that in the dissection you will find this is the deltoid. Now this is the dorsal view and when you will cut the muscle then and then only you are able to appreciate the deep muscles. So here we can see both this is the anterior view, this is the rib cage and you can see that behind the rib cage you will have the scapula. And there are muscles which are covered by the deltoid. Here you have the origin of subscapularis which will go like this and you have the teres major which is coming anteriorly. You will have the teres minor which is going posteriorly and for those you have to see the posterior view. Now this is the supraspinatus, this is the infraspinatus. So these are the muscles which are connecting the scapula with humerus but the supraspinatus is partially covered by the deltoid near its insertion. Now we will see the muscles one by one. First is subscapularis. Now my dear friends, when you are reading the subscapularis, you always keep the idea of scapula in your mind that scapula is having the ventral and dorsal surface. Ventral surface is known as costal surface or subscapular fossa. Now this subscapular fossa or ventral surface is having the ridges. Now these ridges which are present on the costal surface are responsible for the attachment of intramuscular septas of subscapularis. Now that, that intramuscular septa give rise to the multipinnate appearance of subscapularis muscle. So this is again the question for your exam, which are the multipinnate muscle of upper lip. So one we have already discussed is the acromial fibers of deltoid. Now this is the second muscle that is subscapularis. So it is a multipinnate muscle which is triangular in nature and it covers the scapula anteriorly. Now here you can see that this is the origin of subscapularis. But when you will see the origin, it is not from the whole subscapular fossa. It arises from medial two-third of subscapular fossa of the scapula. And the origin comes from the intermuscular septas also, which is responsible for its multipinnate appearance. The fibers will diverge laterally and they will form a tendon. So you can see that the muscle is taking origin from this part of the two-third area and the fibers are going laterally towards the humerus and they are having a narrow insertion in a form of tendon. While there is a broad origin, that's why it becomes triangular in shape. So this is the important thing to understand. Now the second thing is that subscapularis is also responsible to form the posterior axillary fold. Now in this diagram, you can see that we have removed the anterior wall of axilla. Now this anterior wall of axilla is formed by the pectoralis major and you know that pectoralis major will come here and this will go on the intertubercular sulcus. So when you will remove this pectoralis major, that means we have removed the anterior wall of your axilla. After that, what you are able to see is this posterior wall and this posterior wall of axilla is having three muscles. Now what are the name of these three muscles? This lowermost part is formed by latissimus dorsi. Then above that you will have teres major and some component of 
lower part of subscapularis. So, all these three muscles are can palpable in this posterior fold of axilla, but subscapularis is very high in posterior fold of axilla. So, sometimes you have this question which of the following muscles take part in the formation of posterior axillary fold. So, you will have the major contribution from the lower most is latissimus dorsi and teres major, but this inferior border of subscapularis is also contributing in the axillary fold. Now, this is the important thing that when you will see the origin of the subscapularis, now this origin is coming from the medial two third part of the subscapular fossa. That means this area that is the anterior surface of the lateral angle or you can say the ventral surface of the lateral angle or surgical neck of the scapula is bare area and this bare area is having a sub scapular bursa. Now what is this? Now this is the view from the inferior aspect. Now when you will see the inferior aspect, you can see that the muscle fibers are not coming from this anterior surface of scapula and near the lateral angle on anterior surface you are having this green color pouch like structure which is known as bursa and this is known as subscapular bursa and this subscapular bursa prevent the friction between the bone and this tendon of your subscapularis muscle. So my dear students you have to keep this thing in mind that deep to this area here deep to this area which you are which is visible here from below you have a bursa which and this bursa is known as subscapular bursa so this is sometimes you have the question subscapular bursa now where is the insertion of subscapularis now when you will see the humerus on the humerus you have the two bony features where this is the one projection and this is the laterally large projection. This is known as lesser tubercle, this is known as greater tubercle. Now subscapularis insert on the lesser tubercle of humerus and here you can see that this lesser tubercle of humerus is not visible once you will cut the clavicular fibers of deltoid. Now see, if you will read the deltoid, you have the question structure lies deep to the deltoid. So, this is the anterior clavicular fiber. Now, when you will cut these anterior clavicular fibers, now here you can see that this is the lesser tubercle which is receiving the insertion of the tendon of subscapularis. Clear? Now, what is the nerve supply of subscapularis? Subscapularis is supplied by the branches of posterior cord. Now, there are two branches, upper and lower subscapular nerve, which are having the root value of C5 and C6. Now, the important thing to understand that upper subscapular nerve is a small nerve and lower subscapular nerve is a longer nerve. What is the difference? That upper one is a smaller nerve, lo lower one is a longer nerve. Now, this smaller one and into a one muscle only and that is subscapularis. So, upper subscapular now supply only subscapularis while the lower now is longer that is why it supply two now what two muscles what these muscles subscapularis as well as teres major clear. So, you have to keep this thing in mind that lower subscapular now is longer and it supplied two muscles subscapularis as well as teres major while the upper one is a smaller now which end in the subscapularis itself. Now what is the action? So subscapularis is mainly a medial rotator apart from that it also causes adduction and extension of upper limb. So first we will see the nerve supply in detail in this diagram. Now here you have to identify the posterior cord in dissection also. So what we have did is that we have removed the anterior chest wall, we have removed the ribs which should come here. Now after removing the ribs, you are able to see the anterior part of your scapula with subscapularis. Now on the subscapularis, you can see a nerve is going downward. 
Now this now which is going downward is ending in this muscle and you know this muscle is latissimus dorsi. What is this? This muscle is latissimus dorsi and this now which is ending into this latissimus dorsi has to be thoracodorsal now. And you know that thoracodorsal now is a branch of posterior cord that means this part is the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Now from the posterior cord you can see two major branches here also. This is the axillary now which is making it turn around the surgical neck and it will come out here. This is the radial now. Now this radial nerve is going into the radial groove and then it will come out here on the lateral side of your elbow. Now there are two more branches which we are talking about. For that we have to make this image zoom. Now when you will zoom this image, now you can see that this is your teres major muscle and this is subscapularis. Now here you can see that this now is approaching the teres major and this now is also giving branch to the subscapularis. So this now is become lower subscapular now because I told you that lower subscapular is longer. So because it is having a longer course, it starts from here and it is going till the teres major that is why it is supplying the two muscles while the upper subscapular muscle is a shorter muscle, shorter now. So this upper subscapular now you can see that I have mentioned this as a pink color and it ends here in the subscapularis muscle only. So whenever you are reading the nerve supply of subscapularis you have two nerves one is from the posterior cord that is lower subscapular second is from the posterior cord longer now is lower subscapular now. Now here we will see the movement of subscapularis. Now my dear friends you have to keep one concept in your mind that any muscle if inserting in front in front of the joint then it has to be medial rotator. What is the concept? If the nerve is inserting on the front aspect, it has to be medial rotator. I am not talking about origin. I am talking about insertion of the muscle. So if insertion is on the front aspect, it has to be medial rotator. For example, you can see that this is your teres, uh, subscapularis. Now subscapularis is after taking origin, uh, inserting anteriorly on the lesser tubercle of humerus. Now when you will see this lesser tubercle what you are able to appreciate when the muscle is contracting it is pulling the humerus on inside. So when the muscle is going uh, contracting it is pulling the muscle and you will have this medial rotation of your right upper limb. So you have to keep this thing in mind because it is anteriorly placed it is pulling it like this. In the same way you have seen that your latissimus dorsi which is though arising from the posterior side but it comes from here on the anterior aspect where you have floor of bicipital groove. That is why the latissimus dorsi is also able to do the medial rotation. So what is the concept that if any muscle which is coming on the anterior aspect of the joint from the medial side will pull this on the internally and it is responsible for medial rotation of limb. Clear? Now what about supraspinatus? Now you know that there is a supraspinous fossa in the scapula and that give rise to this muscle. Now this muscle comes from this fossa of the scapula and when you will see the origin it occupies the medial two third of the fossa plus it comes from the superior surface of the spinous uh, scapula, spinous process of scapula. So here is the origin. Now origin comes from the fossa plus this superior surface of the spinous process. Now the muscle is going laterally. So the fibers converge laterally. But the important thing is that it lies on the superior aspect of your shoulder joint. Now the fibers run horizontally and laterally and they are also separated from the acromion process by subacromial bursa. Now here you can see that this is the acromion process and the fibers are coming to this point of insertion 
by passing deep to this acron process so again there are high chances that whenever you are moving the joint there may be a friction between the under surface of this bone that is acron process and the superior surface of the muscle so to prevent the friction between you will have the sub acromial bursa clear now what is the insertion of this muscle now the muscle insert on the greater tubercle now this greater tubercle divided into the three part upper middle and lower now here you can see the top of the greater tubercle or you can say uppermost part of the greater tubercle now what is the innervation it is supplied by supra scapular nerve and it is responsible for initiation of abduction from 0 to 15 degree so first we will see the nerve supply now here you can see that this is the supra scapular nerve you know that supra scapular nerve will go posteriorly by passing through the supra scapular notch now once it comes through the supra scapular notch notch it will give branch to the supra spinatus after that this nerve will go towards the spinoglenoid notch and then come into the infra spinous fossa and supply the infra spinatus clear so here in this diagram you can see the course of the nerve now this is your supra scapular notch and the nerve is passing through this notch first it enter into the supra spinatus uh, supra spinous fossa then it pass through the spinoglenoid notch and come into the infra spinous fossa now in the supra spinous fossa it is giving branch to supply supra spinatus and here it is giving branch to supply infra spinatus clear now when we will talk about the abduction which is a very important movement of supra spinatus is only the initiation initiation means that when you will start doing abduction for first 15 degree this muscle is responsible now when you will see the abduction now this is your abduction now this is the normal position of the limb now when you will start the abduction this is the first 15 degree now up to this 15 degree you will have pure movement at the shoulder joint and after that you will have 90 degree movement by the deltoid and after 90 degree you will have overhead abduction which is caused by movement of serratus anterior and trapezius so my dear students we will divide the abduction in three phases 0 to 15 is purely caused by the supra spinatus which is a initiator then 15 to 90 degree deltoid muscle and after 90 degree you need more movement of the scapula and that is actually the rotation of scapula which is responsible for overhead abduction now there is a one more important point to understand here that suppose a patient is coming with injury to the now supply of supra spinatus now what is the question that a patient is coming to you with not able to initiate the abduction for 0 to 15 degree now how will you ask him to do the abduction so there are two ways of the abduction first if suppose my left side supra spinatus is not working i will not able to do the abduction because the initiation is not possible so the first option is with the my right hand i can move it till 15 degree passively followed by the action of deltoid now the second thing is that there is a compensation now what is the compensation patient will go for lateral flexion now when you will do the lateral flexion of your spine what will happen your limb will have automatically 15 degree abduction there is a gap create between your body and the limb and after that the deltoid will come in action and patient will do the abduction so if you are having a patient who is doing who is having this type of habit or he is doing such this type of the abduction there is a chances of non functioning supra spinatus now infra spinatus infra spinatus is also a triangular muscle it arises from the medial two third of infra spinous fossa and the fibers converge laterally and they crosses the joint posteriorly now here you can see that this is the infra spinous fossa from where the infra spinatus is arising and it is inserting in the middle part of the greater tubercle so the greater tubercle is divided into the three part 
upper middle and lower the highest upper part is receiving the supraspinatus this middle part is receiving the infraspinatus but now the one important point is that it remains posterior to the shoulder joint and just now i told you one concept that any muscle which is crossing the front or in front of the joint is medial rotator and here the second concept if any muscle remain posterior to the joint it is lateral rotator of the joint so this muscle is remain on the posterior side so when the it will contract it causes lateral rotation of your upper lip so this is the important thing that your supraspinatus is abductor while infraspinatus is lateral rotator and the nerve supply is same that is suprascapular nerve which i just explain you that this nerve supply both supra and infra spinatus now here you can see the action of this muscle now this muscle is when it is pulling what is happening your joint is going lateral under lateral rotation so it is pulling the humerus on outside so this is the lateral rotation of your humerus at shoulder joint and this lateral ro rotation is associated with the posterior fibers of deltoid also so whenever you are having the movements of the shoulder joint particularly we are talking about the uh, lateral medial rotation you have to keep this thing in mind any muscle coming anteriorly will responsible for medial rotation and any muscle which is posteriorly is responsible for lateral rotation now teres minor now teres minor is a small muscle which comes from the lateral border but upper two third of the scapula now when you will see the dorsal surface on the dorsal surface we divide this lateral border in the two part upper part and lower part now this upper part is giving origin to a muscle is known as teres minor the lower part is giving origin to the muscle is teres major now origin of teres minor and major is from the lateral border dorsal side but the insertion is different and because of that the action of both minor and major is different you can see that the minor is remain on the posterior side so what will be the action lateral rotation but this major is going anteriorly and it will come on the medial lip of intertubercular sulcus so again the concept will come that because it is going on the front the major is become medial rotator but minor is remain posteriorly so it will remain become lateral rotator of shoulder joint now there is one more important thing is that there is a artery now this artery which is present here is known as circumflex scapular artery now sometimes this circumflex scapular artery which is going to make anastomosis on the dorsal surface of scapula is going to interrupt the origin of teres minor muscle now where is the insertion it will insert again on the greater tubercle but at lower most impression so what are the three muscle on the greater tubercle one is you have supraspinatus infraspinatus and teres minor now here you can see the artery how the artery approaches so in this diagram you can see that this is your axillary artery now this part is the third part of axillary artery now from this third part you are having the origin of one more branch and this is subscapular artery now this subscapular artery gives one more branch that is known as circumflex scapular artery so here you can see in this video clip that this is your third part of axillary artery then you will have subscapular from the subscapular now you can see the origin of circumflex scapular which is coming on the posterior side so this is again the question to understand that circumflex scapular is a branch of answer is scapular artery subscapular artery and subscapular artery is a branch of third part of axillary artery now teres minor is supplied by axillary now now this is very important question for your exam axillary now is having root value of c5 c6 and axillary now supply two muscles deltoid and teres minor and axillary now is a branch of posterior cord of brachial plexus i told you the action that it is a lateral rotator why because it is inserting on the posterior aspect of the joint now here you can see that 
this is the quadrangular space. Now, from the quadrangular space, axillary nerve comes on the posterior side and make a loop around the surgical neck of humerus. So, here you can see this yellow color loop and this loop is loop of axillary nerve. Now, when you will see the axillary nerve course, you have to understand that axillary nerve after taking origin from the posterior cord will make a turn for that it enters here near the uh, medial margin of the humerus and through this quadrangular space it comes posteriorly where it make a circumference or the loop along with the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Now what is the action of teres minor? I told you that teres minor is also a lateral rotator just like the infraspinatus. Why? Because both the muscles are inserting on the posterior side. So here you can see that this is the teres minor and this teres minor is pulling your humerus on outer side. So because of this outer pulling, it is responsible for lateral rotation of humerus. Now, what is the difference between the teres minor and major? This is again the question. So there are two differences. First is on the origin. When you will see the origin, teres major is having lower origin, teres minor is having upper origin, though they both are coming from the lateral border dorsal surface. There is a difference between the insertion, which is a more frequently asked question. Now, when you will see the insertion, the teres minor insert on the posterior side, lowermost impression of greater tubercle, while teres major comes anteriorly and it insert on the medial lip of bicipital groove. The second question is, the action. The teres major is a medial rotator while teres minor is a lateral rotator. And third and very important difference is now supply. Now teres major, I told you, it is supplied by the same like subscapularis with the help of lower subscapular now, while teres minor is supplied by axillary now. So these are the three basic difference which very frequently ask in your exams. Here you can see the action of teres major which is a medial rotator of humerus. Now here you can see that the pulling of teres major is responsible for inward movement or inward rotation or medial rotation of humerus at shoulder joint. So you have to keep this concept in mind that any muscle which is on the posterior side is lateral rotator but if muscle is coming on the anterior side then it has to be the medial rotator at shoulder joint. Now you have one more question, what is rotator cuff or musculotendinous cuff? Now rotator cuff or musculotendinous cuff is nothing but it is a muscular support which is all around the shoulder joint except inferior aspect. Now we have seen that there are four muscles, those are inserting all around the upper part of humerus. And these muscles are known as subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. Now subscapularis comes from anterior aspect and it insert on the lesser tubercle. Supraspinatus on the uppermost impression of the greater tubercle. Then you will have infraspinatus and you will have teres minor. So these are the four muscles which are forming the rotator cuff. Now the most important thing to understand that this rotator cuff lies outside the uh, capsule. It is not deep to the capsule. So all these tendons blend with the capsule of the shoulder joint and insert with the greater and lesser tubercle. So this is again the question of your exam that musculotendinous cuff supports the shoulder joint outside the capsule or deep to the capsule. Answer is it lies superficial to the capsule or outside the capsule. So it surrounds the capsule of shoulder joint that you can appreciate here that this is your capsule. Now this capsule here is overlaid by these four tendons. So you have to keep this picture in mind that the tendons overlap the capsule and then merge with the capsule and the neck and they will provide support to the joint from upper anterior and posterior side not from the inferior side. Now in this video you can see how the arrangement of the muscles. So this is the first muscle is the supraspinatus, this is the infraspinatus, this is the teres minor. So these are the three muscles from the posterior side. 
now this is the sub scapularis from the anterior side which is going on the lesser tubercle now these all muscles are making a cuff or they are supporting the upper part of your uh, humerus where you will have the shoulder joint but they lies outside the joint clear so here you can see that this green color joint is deep to these musculotendinous cuff so this is the important thing second thing is that you not having any kind of the muscle from below so this cuff is not providing the support from the lower side that's why the shoulder joint or i should say head of the humerus have higher tendency to dislocate inferiorly clear so at the end of this class now we are able to understand the muscles other than deltoid which are responsible for the movement of shoulder joint and now you have the idea about the rotator cuff their muscles origin insertion nerve supply and action of all these muscles around the shoulder joint so this is all for today's class thank you